Mr. Jeremiah, we're back up. Give me a cup of coffee here. We just relax here and enjoy getting into Philippians here. And once again, Philippians is really uh, a nice taut situation. Um, and let's go over this first chapter. Let's read the rest of it, and then I'll go over it. Because it, once again, is I'm going to show you how we, we can learn how to put ideas together or subjects, playlists, right? I'm going to show you how we do that, okay? And we're going to use this as an example. Let's finish the chapter. Um, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are uh, by Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. But I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confidence by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ, even in, of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer, and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope. And in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness and always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart to be with, with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus, in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you. Again, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which ye saw in me, and now here to be in me. So once again, we're back to living bread as one of the main components here, which is chapter 1 of Philippians, verse 29. For unto you is given in the behalf of Christ, is, is given to you by Jesus Christ, not only to believe on him, but also suffer for his sake. And that's everybody. So you thought you can get away from living bread, which is basically denial and so forth? Forget about it. Well, let's go over some of the main points here. He starts out by talking everything is by grace, that he is uh, a servant once again. He's servants. He's a servant. Then he mentions the master. So he starts out where he's supposed to start out. We start everything out with he's the master, you're the servant. And that's by grace. And you're happy to serve. And that he's going to teach doctrine, and you're going to hear commandments, sound doctrine, and living bread. And that's going to give you the opportunity to be wise and to make good choices in your Christian life. How you assess your world through learning, through study, to show thyself approved, knowledge. Knowledge is right there for you, true knowledge, and now you can make good decisions. And this is to learn how to yield properly 
in your decision making process so you make good decisions that are wise that are that you do things that are in line with what what the what the the sound doctrine is so first you learn and then you go now you know how to go and then you become solid and once you're solid you get sealed and all of a sudden you become fruitful you get you get a church office where you can be relied upon to have you prepare you had Chris now you have you prepare and Cristo your opportunity which is basically Chris and now you're taking advantage of the opportunity by making good decisions and listening to your lessons well so now you can make good decisions and God can use you and put you in an office because you're solid and you're making good decisions and you're not going to destroy uh, the church family you're, you're, you're going to be a, a very f a good functioning part of the body of Jesus Christ and that once you get that solid foundation then all of a sudden you can become fruitful you can start practicing things that are beneficial for the church and for salvation planting and watering and, and you're going to plant well and, and now you're planted well now there's new wine for you You've been rooted and grounded, so now we can give you some energy. We can give you some light and water you, and now you can bring forth fruit, because you know how to bring forth fruit now. You're a tree that knows how to do everything right. Right? You're an engine of love now, and, and God's going to give you the choo-choo train juice. You're going to get the, the coal, you know, to put in the boiler. And that comes from the heart of God because you're now rooted and grounded. You're an active member and now you're getting into well done category. You're planting and you're watering and this is success. This is an overcomer. You're yielding to righteousness. You are get, staying into purity and you are being very caring and forgiving. And now you're a winner, see? You're, you're, you're used and you're planted and you're rooted and you're mature and everything is good because mature and planted and watered people they're active vessels they're heart menders they're, they, 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 they fix the mind and this obviously brings opposition when you're vet from the enemy of souls and the people who like the devils who like to see people hurt crying and in pain you are the enemy to these environments because they control these environments and you're coming in and you're taking their spoil you're binding the strong man who is squeezing the poor and and, and the weak and you're helping them you're loving them you're you're showing them that that there's peace available that's why it's called the gospel of peace but unfortunately uh, you're going to make a testimony to suffer for his sake everybody that's what he said but also to suffer for unto you that's the entire church of Philippi not only is he suffering but you're going to do the same thing because now he's going to jail and he's saying that he's, he's in and out of jail but it's good that he's been in and out of jail because it's a testimony of his love of Jesus Christ and for the church. That come what may, I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to keep the name. I'm going to preach to God saves. I'm not going to back down. And I've been, it's been ordained by the master. And by the way, once again, it's not just for me to face difficulties for, for the church purposes, but you also. We'll talk about fake preachers and false apostles and people preaching and he's going to say well you know what I'm here to glorify God in every type of opposition that goes for people who don't know what they're talking about who are trying to attack me and it doesn't matter but also to suffer for his namesake there's a semicolon there let me see what is that which is having the same 
conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. But also, also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me. The war is for you too. This is a war. And nobody is immune from the war who is converted. So it's a grace doctrine to learn commandments so that you can become a solid thinker and, and, and behave properly in the church. This will also help you to learn how to yield to what's good for you and what pleases the Lord. And this makes a solid Christian. And now you can be put to use because you are behaving properly. You're open to a lot of work. You're open to being humbled, being lowered, and being forgiving to the church body, which is very important. In order for the church work to be successful, people have to be solid, they have to be well learned, learned. They, they have to know how to stay away from sin, and this is what God wants. So you can handle yourself amongst the brethren well and wisely. Your planting and watering is done good, well, effective. And that engine you've got going is going to keep flowing the love of God in you as long as you do what's, what's been said here, which is do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. You're going to do what's just and be pure, and you're going to walk humbly, and you're going to uh, walk humbly and, and be merciful. Okay? This is a really good chapter for a good lesson to just get into your scriptures and understand how everything ties in together. First, we have the grace doctrine mentioned, which is number four in this ministry, which is grace. All this is done by uh, grace, and, and God knows that you're not perfect, and that means he's going to give you mercy so you can serve him. He's pure. And you're going to study the Bible doctrine, sound doctrine, and the living bread, and, and, and that's going to give you the, the ability to walk straight. You're going to know how to walk straight. You're going, to, you're going to know how to yield properly to the right stimuli and yield to church office work. If it's time to do it, you go do it. And that's going to cre create fruit. It's the process of fruit. Now, obviously, he's adding endurance here because he's going to jail and prison off and on. So he's having to endure that and be patient so that he understands that pretty soon he's not going to do this anymore. He'll be in heaven with Jesus Christ because he, that, that's one of the big parts of this, of this chapter is that he wants to be with Jesus Christ more than he wants to be on the earth. It's far better. Philippians chapter 1, verse 23. I mentioned to someone in the story the other day that it's far better to be with Jesus Christ. And they said, uh, I don't know about that. I, I, I want to be here and so forth. Well, that's not good. We focus on exactly what he said. It's far better to be, to be with the Lord. It sure is. Because you're with the one who loves you and you're in love presence. You're not, you're not in a war anymore. Uh, verse 28. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. This is a war. We're not terrified by people who attack us, lie on us, uh, you know, and they do what they do. Paul said, don't be terrified. The Bible says to fear the Lord. Don't fear people who can destroy you, put you in jail. Fear people, fear God who can put you downstairs. If you're going to fear anybody at all, there you go. Um... Let's continue with chapter 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any vows and mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So now we're getting back into love and fellowship between Christian um, and how this makes you feel, feel, feel good. That's a consolation in, in Christ. In other words, you're having difficulties, but the fellowship of the brethren is going to mellow you out. It's going to 
it's going to soothe your soul and give rest for your soul. the love joy of fellowship is going to take that 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 conflict you're in and settle you down and the word is comfort in second corinthians chapter one that's why the holy spirit is called a comforter the koinonia and fellowship of the brethren has with it the spirit of god which is the, the, the presence of love in your heart fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded having the same love being of one accord and of one mind or of one of one mind let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves look not every man on his own thing but every man also on the things of others let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus who being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore god hath also highly exalted him and giving him a name which is above every name that at the, at the name of jesus every knee should bow and every and, and pardon me that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Stop right there. So we have some heavyweight stuff here. We, we, oh, it's far better to be with Jesus Christ as heavyweight, isn't it? Sure is. It's also heavyweight where he's when he mentions here vainglory, which he always mentions over and over again. People want people want to be proud of themselves. And there's pride in every church. And one of the big issues, of course, is being proud of something. Humans naturally want to find something to be proud of, don't they? Yes, they do. And he wants them to be in love, and in love, there is no pride. And, and care for other people in your heart is the, the first emphasis here. Then he goes contrary to people who are proud. Then he talks about how thinking about other people's issues is, is selflessness to a certain degree. Now, now we go back to boots on the ground, what, Jeremiah? We go to boots on the ground, what? Living bread. Let this mind be in you, a servant mind. Verse 7, the form of a servant. You know, let this mind be in you. What do you do? You let the mind be in you. What do you do with, what do you do with this mind when you let it in? You hold it. Take up your cross and hold it, the master said. So you need to hold a servant mind. You don't let a servant mind go. We just read in the previous chapter uh, in Galatians where you're no longer a servant, but a, but a child. No. You're no longer just a servant. That's what he meant. Otherwise, he wouldn't tell you to put on a servant mind. I'm going to stop right here. Um, we'll come back to chapter 2. We have a lot of work. To, I'm going to have to read through 2. Of course, 2 is difficult to get through because we have. I want, I'd rather be with Jesus. Uh, for, for me to live as Christ and die as gain. Um, uh, all of this is living bread all over again, isn't it? It sure is. Living bread is based upon denial and the benefits of denial. The requirements of denial. To, to, to die is gain is the benefit of denial. For me to die and to deny my life in my human body is gain for me. 
because he's, he's going to be with Jesus Christ. We'll come back to chapter, chapter 2 later on, okay? Once again, I showed you how grace goes to doctrine and, and servitude. Uh, of, of the first thing he mentions in, in, this, in this book is that he is a servant of the master, which is where everything starts. Everything basically starts with you acknowledging that you're a servant and he's the master. Then he hammers it home again when he says, let this mind be in you, which is to be a servant-minded person. Uh, Jesus did not think it was robbery to be found in a human servant body. Who being equal with God, he was equal with God, that's the point. But he took on a human body, which is to basically lower yourself heavy duty. Okay? He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. So, so, so everything always comes back to that. That's living bread. That's the reason Jesus Christ's body was resurrected, was because he was obedient to death on the cross, and he carried his cross all the way through. He didn't drop his cross. He didn't drop a servant mind uh, humility, humiliation there. He humiliated himself. Servant mind. Jeremiah, you said those were the main ideas of Christianity. Yes, you, you, you should see that by now. For those of you who are getting to pay attention. Okay? The book starts out with, I'm a servant of the master. Then, all of a sudden, he is a servant again. This time, he, 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 he allows himself to be lowered. So if, if, a thing, if, a, if the same thing applies to you, then you must allow yourself to be lowered, basically in the sight of men, or, or something along those lines. I should not. Mary and I, we'll be back later. Amen. Philippians chapter 1. 